hi guys welcome to my channel today i am finally filming my testimony in finding jesus so this might be a little shocking to anybody who has been following me but i have been searching for the truth for a while now and it all started in 2018 2018 or two, yeah it started in 2018 that's when i really started searching for the truth and i kind of found it but i walked away from it so before that let me just backtrack you guys i was raised catholic kind of it wasn't like a committed catholic it was more like oh someone passed away we're going to a catholic church service or when i would be with my dad on the weekends you know whenever he would choose to go to church we would go to church with him and all my family's catholic they're either atheist or catholic from what i know so that's that when i was 19 18 i was 19 for sure i started looking into law of attraction which basically makes you the creator of your reality so it has nothing to do with god that ha that stuff has nothing to do with god so you basically create your own reality and i started using it because i was a very very negative person um i get mad for everything i was rude mean um and just in general negative so I decided to go into law of attraction and I started attracting, you know, uh, parking spots, green lights, that's how it starts. And then a new job, making more money. And that's, law of attraction works guys, but it's not for God. So whatever's not for God is against God. So I was attracting all these stuff, but I was still empty, you know? Um, I was working out i started working out and i start i was getting the body i wanted um i did prep i'll be answering pictures of all this stuff i did prep which basically means i was going to do a bikini competition and this is the fittest i've ever been ever but this is like the most alone i've ever felt you know I, at this time i lost all the friends that i had because all i cared was money and working out that's literally all I cared about. So all my friends that I had from high school, they wanted nothing to do with me because I was so selfish. Which, looking back at it, yeah, I was super, super selfish. So if you guys are watching this, uh, public apology here. Yeah, I was a selfish brat at that uh, at that time. And um, I started hanging out with people that I worked with. And I worked in LA Fitness. And if you guys are familiar with how LA Fitness works, if you're on the sales team, you sell memberships, you're paid hourly and commission. And you work anywhere from 40 hours to 48 hours. So you do, there's a lot of overtime. And this is like entry level, like entry level to sales, a sales counselor. So basically, I was fixated on how much money I can make. And I was still using Law of Attraction at this time. And within three months, into the company i was uh, one of the like a new sales counselor making the most money from all the sales counselors in my area so they were super impressed with that and i got a promotion i became um a pilates director which is basically like a director of a fitness department so i was managing a studio within la fitness in lake forest and um I, it was a lot of work it was really far and at this time i was smoking a lot i was literally smoking um on my way back from work and all night before going to work the next day i would literally be on my way on my way to work falling asleep <laughs> and it's 40 miles away from where i live so i was driving 80 miles every day and on my way back i would be smoking um but during this time i was still using um law of attraction and i was basically attracting all the deals i was getting and it, it was working you know i um i bonused you know the first month that the bonuses were available i made 
almost three thousand dollars in two weeks also i forgot to mention i was getting out of my first relationship at this point um i didn't really mention it because i i didn't know anything about god when i was in this relationship but it was my first relationship ever my first real relationship my first love per se and when we broke up um that's when i started working at la fitness and that's when i made everything about like la fitness and prep so that's when i became like very very selfish and stopped caring about my friends and their feelings and stopped caring about basically anything that wasn't money or fitness that's all i was about at this point and where was i i kind of got off track a little bit since i had broken up with my ex officially during this time i was having a lot of let's say i was sleeping around at this point with different guys and i was partying every weekend and i was smoking every day and i was literally doing anything to numb the pain like i used to listen to a lot of 21 savage at this time and i remember my favorite song from him was numb the pain with the money so <laughs> that just goes to show like how how bad worldly music is like that that stuff like really changes really like what you consume literally makes you think the way they think so i was listening to a lot of 21 savage um a lot of rap a lot of vulgar stuff and that's when i was sleeping around a lot and partying and drinking a lot and i also quit prep because i couldn't handle the pressure of managing my own studio and being on prep so I ended up quitting prep and I gained a couple pounds around like 10 pounds and this is like when I was like really about my body when I got thick <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> but yeah when I got thick and I basically just glorified my body and my butt and my progress and like that was literally all I was about like my life really had no meaning like what was I living for? I don't know literally living for money weed alcohol partying concerts um it was pretty empty my life really had no meaning at this point you know i was literally just trying to forget uh the pain that i was in i was trying to numb the pain that i was in and after after that when i was uh i stayed at lake forest where i was the pilates director for three months and when i decided i wanted to leave you know i wasn't expecting to stay a manager i was expecting to go back as a sales counselor but to my surprise i mean i'm i don't want to boast myself or anything like that but at this at this time uh i was pretty good at what i did i was pretty good at selling so once i left lake forest they made me a general manager of a whole like la fitness not just of a studio in LA Fitness, but literally the general manager of the whole gym. So the pressure was on, guys. Um, I had to manage my own gym and I went from working 45 hours to working over 50 hours every single week, man. And I was partying, literally it was work, workout sometimes, partying smoking like it was pretty bad at this gym where i was a general manager this is where i met amelia's dad and you know i will forever be thankful for god letting us cross paths at this point we were both like really lost he was super into meditation he was into law of attraction he was into the teaching of i forgot his name alan alan something but it's basically like this i'm sorry this very ignorant teaching that nothing should have no labels and there's no good or bad literally straight from the devil all that stuff and you know i started getting into that stuff too and at first we were just friends and then we started hooking up and we started to catch feelings kind of not really it was just basically the hooking up that made us think we had feelings but we ended up getting together a week later i find out that i'm pregnant 
literally a week later after being his official girlfriend premarital premarital sex guys and i was pro-choice at this time so obviously i found out i was pregnant if you guys ever saw my uh it's not up anymore because the stuff i say on it and all the cursing i say is disgusting but i used to be pro-choice and my first thought was obviously uh i'm not having a baby i can't have a baby and you know what's crazy guys like even when you're in the dark and you're living in the world and you're living in your sin like god will still try to talk to you he will still reach out to you he'll still try to pull you in i just remember crying on my way home and then having to go to his house and tell him that i'm pregnant and i i just kind of keep thinking like oh i'm gonna get an abortion i'm gonna get an abortion and i literally heard god in my head say no no you're not gonna get an abortion you're gonna have this baby and that was the first time I ever heard God and listened to him. That I knew it was God. That was the first time I knew God spoke to me. All oh, glory to God, guys. I, I went through the pregnancy and I had a healthy pregnancy, thanks to God. And at this time, like, I, I would pray um, every day, you know, for, for me to have a healthy daughter. But I wasn't reading his word or anything like that. I just prayed that... God would give me a healthy baby and he did and so at this time Edgar ended up moving in we stayed together during the preg we stayed together mostly because I was pregnant if I'm being honest um, it, it was a very forced relationship so but not a lot of people know uh, some people know but I just want to ask you guys to please don't have any negative thoughts about her dad he is saved he is having a walk with the lord and this is when we were both very lost so please uh no judgment or hate towards him he has changed you know he's a better person and he's walking with the lord just like i am it's okay guys i already forgave him so he was basically cheating on me the whole time and i ended up finding out when amelia was six months and uh, man man let me backtrack a little bit before I found out. Before I found out, we he started looking for the truth himself. And he ended up finding out that all his, like all, everything that he was learning from Alan, I don't know his name, Alan something and the no label, the no label thing and the law of attraction and all of that, he ended up finding out that that goes totally against what God is. And he started looking for God at this point. This had to be like, I don't know maybe Amelia was like three months old when this happened so he was going to the catholic church and uh reading the bible and learning about god so i of course joined in and i would read literally just certain parts of the bible i think the only full book i read was like john 1 john 2 john 3 which is like the three pages um but i never read a full book i would just read verses to like feel good about myself and I didn't really understand like God at that time because I couldn't wrap my head around loving God more than my daughter. So, you know, I wasn't quite there yet, <laughs> like realizing the truth. So I just, uh, you know, he was trying to walk with the Lord and then I started getting closer to the Lord, but kind of like just letting man teach me what, you know, the word of God is because I never read it on my own. I never really felt convicted for my sins too much um i was still you know i was living with my boyfriend who i wasn't married to and we were still sleeping together so it, it was just like no clarity at this time and i remember when i found out that he was cheating on me man i got so mad like woo, lord have mercy on me i got so mad guys i literally went to his job i keyed his car i threw all his stuff i cursed him i told him he deserves to go to hell um which i wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy ever now that i i know the the truth um but yeah it was a really hard time for me and i feel like um that was a moment for me to lean in on god and really learn about god 
but it made me turn away from God because of how mad I was and I literally put all the blame on him I was I was like how can you call yourself a man of God if you're over here you were over here cheating on me all the time and basically <laughs> I was putting my faith in a man instead of putting my faith in God I literally used to pray to God like if this is not the man for me can you like take him out and he did that and then I got mad so I ended up walking away like walking away I didn't know the truth yet but if I would have kept looking I would have found it so I walked away uh, it started especially when I went back to um, to work at the gym so i went back to work at the gym but this time i wasn't going into sales so it wasn't really about money i i went back f to be a personal trainer so i went back as a personal trainer which was something i always wanted to be even before i got into sales for la fitness but i ended up getting pulled into sales when i was trying to become a personal trainer and personal trainers get paid nothing compared to the sales people so i wasn't about money at this time but i was about you know my body getting my revenge body um <laughs> basically i knew about god but i kind of just decided i didn't want to live for him i wanted to live for myself and that's exactly what i did um i started partying harder than ever like this was my worst party stage i would say um I would go out every other weekend so every weekend he had the baby i was out the first three weekends i went out i was in vegas so like going back into the party scene i went straight to like sin city i was in vegas and then i went to vegas and then i went to vegas i did cocaine for the first time um keep in mind i have a small child and i'm doing all of this literally so deceived and i was still really heartbroken let me get I see it up a little bit. I was still really heartbroken over what happened with her dad and I, and I had not forgave him, man. I gave him such a hard time. It took me forever to forgive him. And that's not the way it should be, you know? Because God forgives us, uh, we should forgive others. But I just couldn't let it go. I would give him a really hard time. I would always be fighting with him. I would always be cursing him. I would always be telling him to go to hell. Uh, just it was bad i was really bad and unforgiving at this at this point and you know he would always tell me like oh uh you should start trying to get close to god yada 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 and i would i was totally turned off by that and i'm like you're such a hypocrite you know you're like going out all the time and you're trying to tell me to get close to god uh i don't want to hear it from you so I kept on partying and then I started going uh, to the rave scene and I started raving um, and this is the point where like I kind of I was kind of like wow do I really want to live like this like when I I would pop pills at the at raves um, when I went to escape uh, I did this was like my first time doing pills too. I did a total of three mollies, I think. Was it three? Yeah, it was like three and a half, almost four. Um, and I remember when I was rolling, when I was on drugs high, I would be thinking, is this what I want? Like, is this what I want? Because I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing was wrong right here. And you know, I couldn't like walk away from it because it's addicting. The music's addicting, um, the drugs, the drugs, like the how you feel in the moment. And I just want to touch on, on doing like pills and stuff really quick. Uh, the high after, when you do them is like, obviously it feels, you feel euphoria, like you're happy, but it's fake because once you're off the drugs and you come down, if you guys don't know what a come down is, you're literally feeling the opposite very intensely the opposite very intensely of what you were feeling so you start feeling depression anger um i would even get i never get suicidal thoughts and i would kind of get them after coming after doing a pill and coming down so 
like I knew the life I was living was empty and I knew that you're saved through faith and grace and that Jesus loves you but you know I was not doing anything to please Jesus at this point so I kind of knew I was like headed towards hell at this point and I just didn't care you know I was again sleeping around and basically focusing on my body glorifying my body on Instagram posting pictures of you know my body 24 7 like my whole Instagram if you would go through it like you could just see pictures of my body pictures of my body pictures of my body and I would get praised for it and I would get messages like oh I want to look like you um how do you how did you do that how do you look like that after having a baby and people think that that's the answer and I've been in the fitness industry for over four years and I can tell you guys having a nice body and knowing about fitness and knowing about diet and all of that is not the answer like you can't find fulfillment you're never satisfied never never you're never satisfied you always want more there's always something wrong with you your waist is never small enough your butt is never big enough your arms are never toned enough like it's just man i just want to apologize to anybody that would look at my instagram and think wow she has it so together her life seems so good it's so empty chasing that like it's so empty going after vanity um and yeah i that was basically what i was doing and it kept going i did this for almost a year so i started the partying in june and i went all the way till february of june of 2019 and then all i went all the way till february every other weekend going out and thanks to coronavirus like i, I had to stop going out because my family took the coronavirus very seriously and in february was actually my last rave and the last time I was in Vegas and this this time when I went to uh, to Vegas uh, I had never done that many drugs in my life and 2020 you guys I had like this huge lineup of festivals I was gonna go to I was going to be on Wonderland I was gonna go to EDC I was gonna go to Coachella I was gonna go to Escape I was gonna go to Countdown I was gonna go to a whole bunch of festivals and honestly, I'm so, so thankful for this this year because it was a rude awakening to myself. And, you know, I was woken up this year. And um, after Vegas and like doing, I've only done coke, you know, twice in my life. And I, I had, I did, the first time I did it, I only did like one line. But the second time I did it for the weekend I was in Vegas, I did it every day. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I also popped ecstasy pills. An ecstasy, oh, half of an ecstasy pill. Um, so, oh, I forgot to touch on the fact that all of January and February, I was doing an ecstasy pill every other weekend you know looking like i was living the life i was partying i had a nice body um it looked like i was happy but i wasn't i wasn't it was so empty and like i'm a mom why <laughs> like i'm lit i was literally risking my life doing drugs to have a little bit of fun and i could have easily you know if the cocaine had fentanyl god forbid uh, i could have died if the ecstasy pill was laced with fennel, I could have died. Like, there's just, it's just not the answer. Like, that's not the answer. And if anyone's watching this and this is like your lifestyle, I'm not trying to condemn you. But you know as much as I do how empty that lifestyle is. It's empty. It's not fulfilling. You get your two seconds of pleasure, your two seconds of fun, and then what? You come down and you feel worse than ever. And then you're just waiting till the next time you can get high again. During quarantine, you know, I had to stop seeing all my friends. So I stopped going out. I was talking to this guy during quarantine and I was, try I was trying to like force myself to read my Bible. The lust was kind of blocking me from getting into my word. So I had to stop talking to him. And I did, I stopped talking to him. Um, 
but right before I stopped talking to him, I was smoking this uh, stizzy a lot. And this was like when I hit the, the lowest. And I was smoking, you know, just to not feel so empty because you, when you don't have partying and drugs and alcohol and a guy to distract you from how empty you really are, like you really start feeling it. And that's exactly what I was feeling in quarantine just empty you know I had I had no distraction I had no playground to like get my mind off get my mind off how empty I was and I think that's why there's such a great awakening this year because you know we have no distraction so we realize how empty we really are so I was literally high this was like for about two weeks I was literally high every day every second of the day every night and I was heavily, heavily, heavily in my social media. You know, like I would spend 24 seven on my social media faded and I would barely pay attention to my own child. Like I would pay attention to her, but it was not what I wanted to do, which is unnatural. You're like, if you're a mom, you shouldn't want to spend time with your kid. You shouldn't want to be high all the time and on your phone. So I kind of hit rock bottom here. And I, this is when I read the book, Live Original. And it's by Sadie Robertson you're a Christian, you're probably familiar with her. So in the book, it said, life is an option, change is possible. It kind of hit me because at this point, I was uh, already trying to read the Bible and trying to get close to God. But you know, I had, I was smoking a lot and I had just stopped talking to this guy. So it's kind of like sad about it. Life is an option, change is possible. And when I read that, the conviction I felt, you guys, man, it was heavy. Because every time I would get high, I would get this um, like anxiety attack that I, I was going to hell. Because I just couldn't leave my sin, you know? I couldn't stop lusting. I couldn't stop smoking. I couldn't stop listening to EDM music that literally glorifies the devil. <laughs> The work of the devil. Um, right when I read that, I was like, I'm done, you know? Like, I'm surrendering to God. Like, I'm done living this empty life. Like, I was really feeling so empty at this point because I had no distraction. I had no boy to distract me. I had no friends to distract me. I had no partying or drugs or raves to distract me. Just the social media. If you're just on social media all day and you're high all day, you're obviously going to feel you're gonna feel what you truly feel inside. So, I grabbed my, my stizzy that wasn't even done yet and I threw it away and then I got on my knees I wrote well first I wrote down every single sin that I was guilty for finally I hadn't confessed to God in over a year at this point uh, I got on my knees and asked for forgiveness of all my sins after that I tore up the paper I threw it away and I felt free I felt so free but I still struggled a lot with um, anger and pride, you know, a lot. That was, those were kind of my main issues. And, and God came through though, because, you know, I was truly learning about him and he convicted me of everything that I was doing wrong. Like I stopped listening to music altogether. You know, that was kind of like the first big step I took after throwing away my my pen um, and after I stopped listening to them I threw away like any stickers I had that glorified those DJs um, or my favorite artists whatever the case was and I started listening to worship music only and I even stopped listening to Bad Bunny which is crazy because I really used to like his music and I just completely stopped doing that um, and during this time you know I was struggling still with my pride I was still getting into fights here and there with uh, her dad but not as big as before um, and 
I had like a, a minor setback. I started watching Desperate Housewives again, <laughs> which is like a show that I'm like super addicted to. But, um, you know, I stumbled, he forgave me and delivered me from it. So I stopped watching that show. And I would pray for, you know, to for him to change my heart because I still had a heart of stone and I wanted a heart of flesh. And that was basically one of my main prayers for him to change me, for him to change me. And he did. He really, truly changed me, you know. Um, another conviction that I felt, he like made me delete all the pictures of myself because I was making myself my own God. I literally had 10,000 pictures of myself, like gym selfies, selfies of myself, um, selfies of my body, like of just me. 10,000 pictures in a matter of a year. You know, today they promote self-love so much that we don't see how far up we are our own. Yeah, you guys know what I was trying to say. I completely stepped away from my social media, my Instagram. I had to just step away because I did deactivate it at this time to get closer to God. But once I went back, I kind of found myself getting into the same um, habit of try almost trying to glorify myself. So I just deleted it. This just happened like a week ago. Like I'm done with Instagram. I'm not doing that anymore. If I do go back to Instagram, it will literally just be to spread, um, spread the good news, you know, to spread the gospel. So delivered from my sin of loving myself so much and my sin of drugs and alcohol my sin of lust you know like he just took that all away from me in a matter of i don't know when did quarantine start march april may june july august in a matter of like six months i stumbled and i would mess up and i would still get those temptations but i these past this past month of August, like he really just helped change me. And, you know, I finally forgave her dad for what he did to me. And he forgave me as well for all this stress I put him through. God is good. He is good. Um, I even deleted everything off my YouTube because I don't want this YouTube channel to be about me. This YouTube, this YouTube channel is no longer about me and my life. This YouTube channel is just going to be about God, you know, all glory to him. Um, I just want to help anyone who feels empty and feels like they're missing something. What you're missing is God. What you're missing is, what you're missing is Jesus Christ. You know, I, I never thought I'd get in front of a camera and, and speak this loudly and boldly about jesus christ because i kind of used to think that christians were weird that did that but you know jesus is the way the truth and the life and he is good guys he is so good um our reward isn't here in this world our reward is eternal in heaven and you know what I, a huge realization for me was why do I care so much about what people think why do I care so much about if people think I'm a Jesus freak or a Bible thumper now I don't care I'm not here to please you guys I'm not here to please you I'm here to spread the truth and I'm here to please my father in heaven and that's it you know I have been completely delivered from the lifestyle I used to live, from the emptiness that I used to feel every single day and every single second um, of my life. And I, I hope this video can just help one person that was living my lifestyle, looking for fulfillment, especially this year in 2020, guys. Like, <laughs> this year is only gonna get worse. Um, we're we're gonna enter the seven-year tribulation pretty soon and jesus is gonna come back for his bride 
before we enter that tribulation. And if you don't surrender your life to him, you're going to be left behind. And the only way you'll make it into heaven is if you die for your faith. I'm not here to condemn you guys, to judge you guys, none of that. I'm just here to let you know if you're looking for that meaning, if you're looking for for that unconditional love, if you're looking for mercy, if you're looking for fulfillment, it's Jesus. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. <sighs> wow. I finally filmed my testimony. All glory to God, guys. Thank you so much for watching this whole video. If you watched this whole video, thank you for hearing me talk. If this plants a seed um, of faith in you, um, I, I'd, I love to water, water it. You can uh, message me here on YouTube or can you message on YouTube? If you have any questions or anything, just reach out to me. I'm going to put my Snapchat down below. That is the only social media I have right now. I do have TikTok, but um, I feel like it'd be easier to talk through Snapchat. So if you guys have any question about faith, if you want to know any advice, I'm totally down to help. And the only person that can grow that seed of faith is Jesus. So yeah, it feels really freeing to just be able to talk about this to you guys. And I really hope that if you have been wondering what's missing if you've been wanting to turn to god i hope this can inspire you guys to search for him you know all glory to him um, i couldn't have done this without him you know i had to get on my knees and surrender and ask him to change me ask him to change my desires ask him to change the way i think ask him to deliver me from my sin i had to I had to beg I had to beg him and he's so good and faithful and merciful and loving that he will deliver you from it because he wants you in heaven with him you know we're gonna enter a really scary time and i think it's time for us to wake up and put our faith in our lord and savior you guys there's literally scientific proof that jesus was here is here and is still to come so <laughs> yeah um i'm gonna leave it at that and that's it for this video i think i already said that but thank you guys for watching um i hope god blesses you guys um if you are walking with the lord i'm so happy for you if you're looking for the lord you can find him seek and you will find knock and he will open the door thank you guys i'll see you in my next video